And all right. To today is September 21st. This is a meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee. It's approximately 11.32 or something. Um, and present are me, Myra Ross, and Marty Smith, are you here? Yes, I am. Elise Link, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, and Sarah and Darren, are you here? I'm here. And Ruth Smith? I believe is not here at present. So we have four out of our six members. And this and, is Tori, I'm here. Oh, Tori, I'm sorry. How could I forget Tori? So we have five out of our six members. Wow, I'm sorry about that. That's I had a flu shot last night and I don't feel very good. So sorry mm. about that, Tori. It's amazing no how bad a flu shot can make you feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, okay, so um, we have moved, well, well we, I thought we were going to add a public comment period. Um, and I don't know if there's anybody here at, the, at this time for public comment. Is there anyone who's here to make a comment? No, uh, there isn't. Okay. It's just the I applicants. Thought, okay, um, I you, thought I, we were going to add one at the beginning and keep the one at the end. Uh, but that's not on the agenda. So I put it after um, new items, um, new business, oh, you did? because oh, okay. uh, we have uh, guests um, that are here today um, from Amherst College, and uh, okay. I felt that you know they're on the agenda, so perhaps um, okay. we would Somebody have them would come go after. first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why don't we start with the Amherst College? Um, group who are gonna talk about signage and wayfinding. All right, all right. Um, so I just made uh, Seth and Andrew panelists. So we'll give them a second to, as they um, let their audio and cameras work. So, and there was another doorbell. Ruth is here. Oh, Ruth yeah, but here. I'm not Great. gonna be able to stay very long. I'm expecting a, a relative to come see me, so. Um, I may log That's out. That's nice. Okay. Nice to okay. see you, however, briefly. Okay. <laughs> Thank so you. So we have representatives from Amherst College um, and uh, uh, Seth and uh, the design consultant uh, working with Amherst College, uh, Andrew um, Bresi. Uh, Bresi. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, who will be uh, speaking with you all about the Amherst College signage and wayfinding program. Um, and so the town council, so they have a variety of signs that are proposed on their campus, on their private property. Uh, for, but for the purposes of this meeting, uh, the town council has requested that various boards, including this board, uh, review the signs that are in the town council's um, jurisdiction, which includes the town common and the public right away. So I'll let Seth and Andrew um, uh, go over um, their presentation and to answer any questions. Hi, everyone. How is everyone this afternoon? Morning? What is it? It's morning. Still morning. Still morning. <laughs> um, I'm just a quick introduction. I'm uh, Seth Wolschutz. I'm with the Design and Construction Office at Amherst College. Um, Tom is on vacation. My uh, supervisor is the director of the department is on vacation today and, and couldn't join us. Um, we are uh, excited to show you what we've been working on. Uh, a little bit of a glimpse into a much larger project. I will let Andrew Barassi of Roll Barassi, our science consultants, take it in one second. Just um, a quick follow-up to more what Maureen uh, has mentioned. This is part of a, a much bigger project of uh, wayfinding throughout campus and um, you know and trailblazing to get people to campus. Amherst College has historically not had any signs, um, and we are looking to rectify that uh, and be more inclusive and tell people where they need to go and get them there, um, especially to find visitor parking um, and not be driving through campus aimlessly in that uh, in that pursuit. So uh, we've been working with Roll Barassi for I think about 18 months and um, have put together a just, I think a really um, beautifully simple in, um, 
in execution, but with a lot of thought behind it, um, signage package. And we are excited to, to kind of run through the highlights of it today, and then we'll answer any questions you have. Andrew? Great. Um, can folks hear me? Yes. Yes. OK, great. Because yeah. uh, I can't hear myself for some reason in my <laughs> headphones. I can never figure this these headsets out. But anyway, um, so what we've done over the past, I'm going to say 18 months, almost 20, almost 24 months, um, is to develop a comprehensive sign program for the Amherst campus. And this includes signs for vehicles, as well as folks who are on foot or a wheelchair. Um, and it starts with welcoming folks to the campus in the form of what we call gateway signs. And we have two types of gateway signs. Two of them are very horizontal and low, about overall four feet tall at the most, and then incorporate granite um, a sort of bases with a long horizontal um, sign panel that says Amherst College. And I'll show you where those are located. The other type of sign is a single post with a, a, a sign panel that projects off of it. And the post is a very dark charcoal gray. And all of the sign panels you're gonna see with the exception of one are very dark in color, um, kind of like an eggplant color. Um, and all of the information on the signs is white. And so you're reading very legible uh, lettering on a dark background, which we find um, to be very effective in two ways. One, you can see the information very clearly. And two, the sign itself tends to recede in the landscape. So the signs aren't screaming at you, but the information is there and clear uh, for you to, 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 to see and understand. Um, the tall signs um, range in height from eight feet, six inches to the bottom of the sign to about seven feet, six inches to the bottom of the sign. Um, other sign types in the program are directional signs for vehicles. Uh, so this is overall about a 12 foot, six inch sign um, with a sign panel that's two feet, 10 inches wide by four feet, eight inches tall. Um, and again, it's a single post with a sign projecting off of it, kind of like a tavern style sign. Okay, and um, it, the height of the bottom of the panel is about seven feet, six inches tall. One comment we got from town council um, is if that could go to eight feet, that would be helpful just in case there's snow removal equipment that needs to pass underneath the sign for whatever reason that it won't get hit. Um, lower profile directional signs that are about five feet tall for information within the campus. And then various parking identification signs for the alum for the uh, Amherst parking lots. All of these sign types, including building identification signs, are a single post with a sign panel projecting off of it. When you're further in the campus, there are some lower profile signs uh, that are double posted um, uh, for identifying buildings as well. But for the most part, um, they're all a single posted sign panel, um, uh, a, a single post with a sign panel projecting off of them. Again, they're all very dark with white lettering. For the case of the vehicular directional signs, that's reflective lettering as well. And then we have finally pedestrian oriented signs. We have um, three forms of a campus map display. One is a three-sided vertical display that's about seven feet, eight inches tall by two and a half feet wide on each side. And they're kind of like display cabinets. On one side would be a campus map with a directory. Another side could be a poster about special events. The third side could be for posting notices, that kind of thing. And these would be located in very sort of pub more public areas of the campus, such as over at Alumni House 
or over at admissions and athletics and over at 79 South Pleasant where the human resources is located. Um, there's a two-sided version, which we're locating at visitor parking lots so that when folks arrive at a visitor parking lot, they can get out and go up to the map and orient themselves as to where they are in relation to the campus and, and uh, principal destinations. The other side could be an event poster as well. Um, and we have a tabletop version of the campus map, which is a single post of granite with um, about a three foot nine inch wide by two foot tall um, map panel uh, that's inclined about 30 degrees. And then finally, we have a very a small four foot tall directional sign for people walking along pathways. Lastly, we're also using larger scale banners on posts for things like the theater, the museums, um, the music hall, those kinds of things that are colorful and celebratory um, and welcome folks to uh, these important visitor destinations. Uh, all of the graphics um, that we've used on the signs follow the Amherst College graphic um, identity guidelines. So the lettering and the arrows, the symbols, the colors, uh, they're all very consistent with the Amherst College graphic identity. Um, we have, uh, these signs are installed with concrete footings. In some cases, they're breakaway footings along the campus perimeter, for example. But in most cases, they're just a direct burial in concrete. As far as the signs that um, um, your group is, um, is, is concerned with are the same signs that the town council uh, is looking at that we're reviewing with the town council as well. But the, the program is comprehensive. It's throughout campus and, and uh, a few parcels uh, throughout town uh, that are Amherst College parcels. Um, uh, they, we've also coordinated with the town sign program, which is being developed and implemented so that we're not conflicting with those sign locations as well. This is an example on these maps, which can be hard to see, but these are the district zoning maps, which we've located our signs on, and we're also showing the town sign locations as well. Um, this is a location that we had for trailblazing to the, to the college, but it's been removed because in coordination with the town, we found the town was also wayfinding in certain areas to Amherst College. And so we don't need to install that sign. Um, so we've made some updates to this, but I'm gonna walk through uh, these sign locations with you. Um, uh, this, for example, is a vehicular directional sign location along South Pleasant as you approach the intersection of Route 16, 116 and 9. Um, there's also another directional sign coming in the other direction heading north. Uh, this is where the principal gateway to campus is located at the corner of College Street and Northampton or 116 and, and Route 9 and I'll show that to you. Uh, we also have a tabletop map kiosk located here over by Converse Hall. As you can see, these faded out signs are other sign locations, but they're really not um, in the uh, area of where um, you're, 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 uh, you're concerned with. Um, we are continuing, as I said, to show town sign locations in the mix here, so you know where those are located. At the other end of campus, um, on South Pleasant is uh, this, the other gateway location, um, which uh, is at the entrance to the athletics and admissions area. Uh, and we also have a small directional sign here, uh, helping you to wayfind to admissions and to the athletic destinations. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, that was, I got confused here. Uh, this is Quadrangle Drive. So this is another entrance into campus where we have the tall 
version of the campus gateway. Uh, and we have a small directional sign that is directing you to accessible parking in the quadrangle area where the museum is located and the chapel. Um, but for the most part, we're directing you back out uh, for visitor parking because we really wanna try to keep the amount of traffic on campus to a minimum. And then further down South Pleasant, again, uh, towards the athletics uh, uh, center. Let me zoom out here. Uh, so this is the athletics center building here in Aura Rink. Uh, here's a secondary gateway location here, similar to the low horizontal version. And I'll show that to you. Uh, and we are identifying the parking lot. There's another vehicular directional sign here, um, as well as a small directional sign getting you to or rink and to admissions. And then at admissions, we're providing a, a three-sided kiosk as well. And just prior to this on South Pleasant is another vehicular directional sign heading north. Over by East Drive, we have another campus gateway sign. That's the single posted tavern style. We're also identifying the parking lot, the Dickinson parking lot, uh, and providing vehicular directional signs just prior to East Drive heading west as well. So these are elevations of those locations. So the first one is the primary gateway sign which is a low, long panel um, with a granite base uh, that is in the form of a seat wall as well. So this is a, a spot where people can sit. And it has another small granite plinth on the left side of the gateway, propping it up as well. And you can actually see underneath this sign and see over the sign. So we're doing all we can to um, to prevent um, uh, blockages of views to the landscape beyond, trying to make this of a good scale, but, but also not uh, too much of a billboard kind of uh, expression here. And you can see in the plan view here, how we're doing sidewalk improvements as well, coordinating with uh, Mass DOT on the work they're going to be doing on the intersection here to make these improvements to the sidewalk as well as curb cuts and the crosswalk uh, leading up to leading to them. So here's the seat wall portion of the gateway. This uh, a per, a curved purple sign panel here uh, and then there's a second um, granite plinth on the on the end of it as well. Um, this is a similar gateway over by the athletics and admissions area, uh, where we are also proposing a seat wall kind of arrangement with the sign panel. Uh, this is set back with the existing pine trees as a backdrop um, and uh, proposing um, uh, plantings as well to really create a nice setting for the gateway at this location here. Here you can see a vehicular directional sign heading south just prior to the to the entrance to um, uh, the athletics and admissions area as well, and a small directional sign there. Here's a plan view. So we're proposing a, um, a, a, a nicely aligned uh, pathway, um, paved pathway to coincide with the gateway and the seat wall. Uh, leading to a cobbled um, curb cut and uh, smooth cobble crosswalk uh, that leads to the athletic center there. This is the East Drive gateway. Um, and this is that tall tavern style sign panel uh, type here. And again, improvements to the sidewalk and grading with a granite seat wall along uh, the curve here with plantings and trees, really try, trying to create a very welcoming uh, kind of setting uh, that's also improved uh, the pedestrian pathway here uh, along with it. You can see that in plan view. So uh, 
we're, we're carrying those, those sidewalk improvements right across East Drive as well, but the, the gateway is here on the west side uh, of, of the entrance here with ground cover plantings and trees and the granite seat wall on both sides. This is at the entrance to uh, Quadrangle Drive, a similar single posted tavern style sign that says Amherst College and the established date. And on both of these gateways, we identify the, the entrance drive. So this is, says, this sign says Quadrangle Drive. And as you can see here, um, if I zoom in, this says East Drive as well. So that helps uh, folks orient themselves as to where they are. These are the types of directional signs that I mentioned before. So this directional sign here is on College Street heading west just prior to East Drive. And we're talking about the parking office, the South Lot, uh, and Amherst College Museums, which would cover Mead and Bineski. Uh, indicating that there's pick up and drop off there as well. Straight ahead for admissions and athletics. And then heading south on South Pleasant Drive, just prior to the major intersection there, we're directing people left down College Street for the museums and visitor parking and straight ahead for admissions and athletics complex. Other vehicular directional signs, this is the location heading north on South Pleasant Street, just prior to the intersection. Directing people right down College Street for Amherst College Museums and visitor parking. And then um, heading south on South Pleasant Street, just prior to the entrance to athletics, we have another directional sign getting people to admissions, alumni gym or rink uh, and then right for Pratt Field as well. I, I'm sorry. Yes, right for Pratt Field. And finally, uh, the, the other vehicular directional sign um, is just prior to the entrance to athletics, heading north on South Pleasant Street, where we're directing you to admissions, the gym and rink, Pratt Field to the left, and just downtown straight ahead. When you're on campus, we only have a few small directional signs on campus, but the ones that you're concerned about here on Quadrangle Drive uh, directs folks straight ahead for the accessible parking for Johnson Chapel and museums. And again, left for um, uh, other museum visitors and visitor parking. Because again, we wanna try to limit the number of vehicles going up into the Quadrangle other than for those accessible parking spaces. Uh, and then this is the small directional sign down by athletics where we're directing you to admissions and alumni gym and of course the or rink entrance. These are examples of the types of parking identification signs. Again, tall, single posted with a projecting sign panel that identifies the lot and tells you the parking permit information, and that there's no overnight parking uh, at these lots as well. So we're trying to combine the identification of the lot with instructions as well to try to keep sign clutter uh, to a minimum. Uh, here is an example of the three-sided kiosk. This is over by admissions, and you'll see that we were, we're proposing to ensure that there's hardscape uh, around the entire kiosk so that folks can um, uh, access the information on all three sides easily. Uh, we're working with a landscape architect to develop the approach to the, to the hardscape around these kiosks. Um, this is a, an elevation showing uh, the height of the information, the map and the directory as well. Um, the smallest lettering on the directory, which is a long list of destinations and the coordinate location of that destination on the map is about uh, 20 points uh, or at about quarter inch. There's a lot of information and we're trying to keep it as large as possible um, at a quarter inch. 
This is a plan view of the three-sided kiosk to demonstrate that we will be ensuring that there is sufficient circulation space around the kiosk so that whether you're walking or in a wheelchair, you can access the information. This is the tabletop version over by Converse Hall um, so that when you get out of the parking lot, there's a map there that you can orient as well. This too will have hardscape around it so that you can get up as close as possible to the kiosk. Um, it is about uh, 30 inches inclined, but that can be adjusted um, anywhere between uh, 45 degrees and 30, 30 degrees, um, you know, which, which, whichever is, is optimal for that. Uh, type of viewing. Uh, and we've ensured that the height of the um, surface is uh, accessible as well. And here you can see the concrete pad will extend out so that there's a clear surface to get as close as possible. And that's, that's it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of information here and I'm, we're happy to circle back and answer any questions you might have or talk about any concerns that you might have. Anybody have any questions or comments? I, I, I do. Elise I do. has raised her hand. Okay. Hi. Um, first of all, I just wanna say, I love the color contrast and the printing um, and the fact that you have all these levels covered. My question has to do with, you're talking about sidewalk improvement. Uh, you mentioned cobble. What does that mean in terms of surface? Uh, usually cobble is textured, isn't it? Well, um, in, in this case, and let me zoom into the plan view. Um, we're using cobble in two ways, or I should say the landscape architect has proposed using cobble in two ways. There's smooth cobble, which is very flat and smooth, um, like an asphalt type of surface. And there's, mm -hmm. and there's rough cobble, okay? The rough cobble is used in areas where folks shouldn't be walking or, or okay. wheeling. And the smooth cobble is used in those areas where you are to be walking or crossing, like, for example, in a crosswalk that's mm -hmm. smooth or in a curb cut that's smooth, except for, of course, the tactile um, panel um, mm -hmm. for folks using uh, canes. Um, so it's, it's being used very, very, very uh, strategically uh, to both beautify um, uh, the setting for the, for the, the, the granite. So instead of having, for example, um, you know, uh, dirt or, or, you know, unkept grass <laughs> strips, we're using the rough cobble so that it's well maintained all the time and has a very nice um, a look to it. So. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, was it Saren who had? Yes. Yes. Um, Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if there are signage for accessible entrances to buildings. In campus, in, in areas of the campus, we are providing um, accessible directions uh, at non-accessible building entrances, directing you to the accessible entrance as required. So we, we are doing that. It's not in the, in the areas and, and um, zones that are under consideration by the town council. And so that's why it's not not, not being shown here, but it's part of the overall campus signage program for Amherst College buildings at non-accessible entrances. We are providing directions to accessible, uh, to accessible entrances. So how are they mm -hmm. going to be like four feet or lower or where are they? Do we have any standards for those? Um, yeah, what we're what we're doing, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have that to show you uh, because it wasn't part of the agenda here. Um, but it is a granite post, like a six inch by six inch granite post. It has the wheelchair symbol on it and an arrow, either left or right or straight ahead, um, that 
uh, directs you to the accessible entrance. And that's about um, uh, three and a half feet tall, I believe. So it's very, you know, it's, it's very legible and clear. It's right where you need the information, but at the same time, it's a, it's a material that the, the college uses in, in the landscape throughout the campus, uh, such as the, the granite. So you'll see throughout campus, granite bollards or other kinds of things like that, granite posts. Um, and so we're, we're playing off of that, that material. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? I'd like to. Yep. Okay. A um, couple of things. This is a really huge project and it's extraordinarily expensive. I've been involved in these. Um, and I think you've done a very nice job of, of getting high contrast <coughs> signage, um, which will be really nice to see. And also having it all branded the same so that once you see those purple signs, you know you're on campus. Um, that said, I have a couple of things. Um, it would be really fabulous. And I know this is, this is crazy expensive, but it would be absolutely fabulous if the tabletop maps were tactile. Um, that would be a really nice thing to have. Amherst College used to have a handout map of the campus that also gave slopes. And having the slopes, or at least somehow an indication of which paths are too steep for someone who's blind or in a wheelchair would be really nice. Um, and that could be done on a tabletop. So just something to think about um, as you expand this program, because okay. I think that would be a real asset. Um, and the third, the third thing I wanna say is you're using what's called the active accessibility symbol. And I know it's sexy and cute, but it doesn't meet either ADA or the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board. It is not, it is not recognized by either body. Um, so you really might wanna rethink doing that. Um, I wasn't, to be perfectly honest, I've been an architect at the university for many years. I'm now retired. And I spoke with the Massachusetts Architectural Access Committee about using the active accessibility symbol, which by the way, is a copyrighted symbol and is not actually open to the public, um, last I knew. And I was told by the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board that I was free to put anything on my signs, but I had to have <laughs> the international symbol of accessibility which is the old style. So I would highly recommend that you re rethink using that because you're potentially going to have a complaint against you. And I will tell you that the university has had complaints. Um, we have had people who've come on campus and complained when they've seen that, that the active symbol. Um, other than that, I think you've got a really nice program. One thing you didn't talk about is your gateway signs, your long gateway signs with the seating. You didn't talk about paving around those. And if you're gonna have seating, you're gonna need paving, but that's just a minor technicality. It was all in the plans that we showed, the paving. Okay, I didn't see it. I missed yeah, let it. Me, I, can, I can go back to those. But... That's okay, you don't have to. Okay. I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> With regard to the symbol, um, honestly, we're often caught in the middle on that thing. I know, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. You know, I know. Because many clients really prefer that, and mm -hmm. many clients 
could care less. Um, so we're, we're always typically leading with that style. As a graphic designer, I'm not a huge fan, to be honest with you. Um, but it is often a symbol that we're, we're the majority of the time directed to use. And so we're just trying to be proactive um, and use the symbol that in our experience, most of folks actually um, uh, ask us to use. Um, so, but, but I'm, I'm taking your, your comment to heart and we'll it's certainly- just a risk. It's a, just that. a risk. You could have to replace all of them. Yep. You know, you could have a drive-by and get a drive-by complaint through the DOJ mm -hmm. and have to fix them all. Thanks for, for letting us know. <laughs> okay, so I have, um, <clears throat> I have a bunch of questions. Um, I guess um, I am totally blind, so I'll tell you that. Um, <clears throat> On your kiosks, I, I tried to describe them <laughs> physically no, no, as much as that's possible. No, that's not my I, issue at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that the the seven foot high and all the driving signs and all of that yeah. are, uh, you know, wonderful. And I, I used to be a low vision person, and eggplant with white writing is perfect okay. um, because it's very <laughs> high contrast. Yeah. Well, black with white isn't as good, um, but I, you know, purple is a color that a lot of people can see. Um, you know. But yeah, you know. black sort of recedes sometimes, um, but the purple will draw people's attention. Um, so I think that's great. Um, so my, my questions really are, I guess, outside of the scope that you thought you were coming here to talk about, which has to do with um, a lot of blind people now are navigating with GPS on a phone. Um, and on the campus, if the buildings are created in a way that they actually have addresses that a GPS can pick up, um, people can do wayfinding to find them. Otherwise, it's a campus full of paths and none of the buildings are clear, but you actually can. There are many apps now where you can say, I wanna go to Converse Hall and you're standing in the middle of the campus. And if the campus is appropriately mapped, you can get to Converse Hall. Um, and I guess that's not signage, but it is wayfinding. Um, so I don't know if you had anybody talk to you about that. You have had blind students at Amherst College. Um, I'm, I know you have uh, people who look at the school who are blind. You have blind parents, you have blind community members who use the campus or work there. So um, I, I guess the question is, about finding the buildings through, um, through GPS mapping. And the other thing would be um, on your kiosks that are at a, um, at a height that people actually could touch. Um, do you have any raised lettering, any braille, any, anything that would be um, accessible? Because some of these signs sound like they are the tabletop and the, um, the kiosks and maybe a couple other ones that they are at a tactile level. Most of them sound like they're really high up. I assume none of them are below seven feet or seven and a half feet tall, right? So a tall person wouldn't crash into them. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Because you know that there's a pole and if there's a pole with a thing hanging off of it, and if it's five feet tall, it's totally illegal. I assume there's a height, and Marty probably knows this, at which it is legal because a person couldn't crash into it, right? I don't know what that height is, but I assume you've looked into that. Yeah, um, it sounded, yeah, it yeah. sounded those, like those are down. those are vehicular direction, directional signs. So they are, and they, and as Andrew also mentioned, uh, the town uh, Department of Public Works has requirements that are above ADA's requirements in order to get snow clearing uh, right. equipment below them. But if so they not go only over... are we above that, so we have to be, so it's eight feet for, for that limit, which is yeah, well fine. above the ADA requirement. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, but if any of them hang over uh, pedestrian pathways. That's what um, we're talking about. 
That's the eight foot requirement that's coming from DPW. Okay, okay. Then I'm not worried about that. Um, but I am worried about wayfinding and I am worried about the particular um, signs that actually are at a, um, at a level that could be touched. And I'm actually interested in um, signs on the buildings, like Saren asked you about accessible entrances. Are there any signs on the building that tell you what building it is? Yes, those were a part of, and uh, apologies since I don't, I'm not sure how well they were described, but uh, building identification signs are part of the package. There's two styles. Um, one's kind of a tavern sign and one's a, a lower sign. But yes, we are we are labeling all of the all. Of the okay, buildings. so to the right or the left or something of each door, if there is a sign that people can see, there ought to be a sign that people can touch that tells people this is the building you think it is. Like a braille sign with raised lettering, like you go into a hotel and every hotel room has a little placard on it that has raised numbers and a braille number under it. Um, if there is a sign on a building that says for, uh, for a sighted person what building this is, there needs to be a tactile way for somebody who can't read the sign to access it. I believe that's actually required. So I don't know if you talked about that at all, but um, I think that's something that you're gonna seriously have to think about doing. If there's a sign on the building that says what it is for visual access, there needs to be also tactile access. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what you know what the what you've done about that, but I think that's a really important thing for me because. So the two things that I am really interested in is the actual mapping of the campus for GPS, so that wayfinding is accessible, and the actual and the and the labels on buildings and on kiosks that are at reachable levels. If um, um, Andrew, I might let you comment on the on the second part. The GPS um, mapping is an ongoing. I did speak with our director of uh, accessibility services, who's uh, part of the office of our general counsel, yesterday, and uh, about what we are doing or planning to do or thinking about doing um, in these regards. Um, so two things. One, there's an accessibility working group. Um, which is going to take this recommendation and, and move forward. It has facilities, general counsel, uh, office of accessibility, amongst other people on it. Um, and they're looking at uh, how we how we publish this information in uh, our online mapping system that we already maintain for other purposes, um, as well as accessible parking spaces and things like that. Um, okay. And then we are also producing an internal guide for our own people to uh, use when scheduling um, events. So they choose locations that are accessible on campus rather than choosing locations that are not accessible. Um, and so that's kind of an internal thing. That's not so much about navigating uh, on campus, but it is you know important that when we schedule right, events that are open to the public, yeah. right, that we pick a space at the yeah. start that is accessible. Um, because there are some spaces on campus that are not. Um, we also have a long standing plan um, we have a, a very, very comprehensive accessibility study, uh, both um, physical uh, barrier study. Um, and so we are slowly making our way through those as we are able. It is you know, 500 pages long, not, not a joke. Um, and so it takes, it's gonna take time, um, but we are, you know, we are working on um, improving both buildings and pathways as we are able, um, including two big uh, pathway uh, interventions that we did this uh, past summer. So that's kind of what we're doing on, on that front. On the um, tactile information on the, on the kiosk. So, so that's, that's something that, you know, we often consider. I think the, the code can be a little nebulous in terms of privately owned buildings versus publicly owned buildings. Um, but I certainly appreciate your perspective and we'll, we'll 
uh, will look at that kind of tactile and braille information at building entrances, um, particularly for those buildings that have a large public um, component, such as the museums um, and uh, athletic facilities, where we're we're getting a lot of first time <laughs> outside visitors um, as well. So, um, point well okay, taken. I guess I'd like point you well to taken have a, and we'll, a we bigger will, view that if you were a blind student and you wanted to go visit your friend in X dorm, sure. um, you so it's not just for public. There are blind people who are employed by and go to school at Amherst College. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it may not be that there's one all the time, but there certainly have been. Um, and so I think, you know, part of access is access for everybody. So if you have a sign on a building that says what the building is, it has to be identifiable. And, and it, the, the ADA, from what I understand, applies more loosely to public entities than to private entities. It's not and that especially, simple. I don't think we should del delve into the specifics uh, of, because um, Title II and Title III are different. And, um, but I don't think that, okay. that I, I get your point. I think your point is that we want to be as universally accessible accessible in as many routes as possible. And it's about the ethos of the of accessibility and not always about, of course, the letter of the law governs, but they did, Andrew's right, it, it's, it's, it is, does get pretty nuanced um, and, and Office of Legal Counsel gets involved. Um, I don't think we need to delve into the specifics because I don't think that I'm qualified to get to go there, but, um, but it's all, they're all conversations that are happening. Um, and I, I think we take your point uh, uh, you know, that, that universal accessibility is, is the goal. Thank you, Seth. So does the board have any recommendations for the signs that are within the town council's jurisdiction? And those are the signs that have been presented today. Um, so I, I, I know that there's been discussion about the, the signs such as the, key, the tabletop kiosk and the three-sided sign um, and um, there was mention about whether, um, you know, uh, about um, how the, the Amherst College website um, could um, provide more information about the locations and perhaps the, the college can look into uh, with the, um, their accessibility working group about, you know, GPS mapping and, and st stuff of, of that. Um, were there any other uh, comments about this, the signage that um, is within the town council's jurisdiction? Oh, and also the active um, accessible uh, symbol. Um, while it is fun, a fun symbol, uh, uh, perhaps the college should consider using the official symbol that's recognized by MA MAAB and the ADA regulations. Um, were there any other comments or recommendations? Sorry about my phone. It'll stop in a minute. Does anybody have any more? No, it's a great start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. D uh, does someone want to make a motion? If there are no other questions or comments. And what would the motion be? Uh, what, you know, what kind of recommend, uh, would you like to give a positive recommendation to the town council or with your suggested comments, such as the official ADA symbol? Um, uh, provide GPS mapping, um, you know, apps or what, or the like, um, and uh, to provide uh, braille or consider providing braille or tactical elements to the tabletop and three-sided signs as presented, as shown. Anybody want to make a motion? Gosh, that's such a long motion to repeat. So <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. What she I, said. 
Yes, I'm... exactly. Mm. Okay. Saren, how do you feel about the symbol? And Tori, how do you feel about the symbol? Um, personally, I like the symbol. This is Tori. Um, but if it isn't uh, ADA approved or approved by the AAB, then I would be safe rather, rather than sorry and use the traditional. Yeah. I, I feel the same way as Tori, but if they want to take it to a, a for a variance on that, I can mm -hmm. see myself voting in favor of that. That's true. Um, Seren, I would do the same thing. If yeah. you wanted to include that in a variance and request permission to use it, um, then go for it because it, it looks so much better than the traditional. Yes. Symbol. Yes. I think that would be a good test of the AAB. I'd like to see yeah. what they say now. I know what they said three years ago, but it'd be interesting. I'm not sure we have, and we'll talk about it internally. I'm not sure that's uh, a battle we want to undertake. Um, yeah, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> we may let someone else do that first. Yeah. Again. So. <laughs> Well, certainly the people Morning. at Amherst College who are paying for all of this should know that there's a potential problem. We understand. Because if they get sued and they hear that you knew about it, that wouldn't be so good. Uh, Tor uh, with, uh, Tori, were you about to say something? So I'll make a motion. Uh, mm -hmm. And can I say the list that Maureen listed off or do I need sure. to list them sure. all? Sure. No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so, you know, there these are, you know, suggest these are suggestions from the DAAC uh, to the town council. Um, so again, it would be, you know, maybe the college wants to think about the symbol and, you know, I, um, one way or the other, um, you know, uh, maybe the, uh, the college could consider uh, what improvements can be made to the webs to the college's website, and if um, in the future, as the program um, expands, um, could a GPS mapping or application be uh, provided um, to provide um, um, direct wayfinding um, directions to the various facilities on the campus, and to um, for the college to consider providing uh, tactile elements for the uh, tabletop and three-sided signs. I would expand that a little bit more. What did you mean by the website, Maureen? Well, Seth had mentioned that there is an accessibility working group that is um, meeting um, currently to explore messaging on the website regarding We ADA. use an online, the map that you see in the kiosk is a reproduction of an online map that you can you know use on your phone um and that's if you can see it and that's what we use as a college to to do all of the mapping including for accessibility okay so i don't know anything about doing it that way with a with using the apps that pick up the the accessibility apps i don't think would work with something off of a website they work off of something that's been mapped, like they usually use Apple or Google Maps mm. to pick up the buildings. Um, so, I, I I don't think I don't think that the website thing solves anything as far as what I said. So I don't know what it would solve, except that people who can see a map in their phone would be happy to use it because people are so used to doing that. So it, it sounds like to me that the, 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 the statement or the comment is that Amherst should explore accessible GPS mapping um, right. for visually impaired experience. Um, right. Uh, yes. Yeah. That sounds like what I'm, what I'm hearing from you anyway, right. which is different from the type of mapping that is currently being used. Correct. Okay. Yeah. A second that yeah. I and there are companies, there are companies that 
will do indoor mapping as well. That's a whole other topic that probably isn't part of what you're doing, although it may be that you're doing it signage is not part indoors. Of what we're doing. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's I think it's helpful to have this kind of understanding. Um, but in, in terms of the the project at hand at this moment, it, it isn't part of the scope of what right. we're doing. But um, certainly appreciate right. here understanding that, that there is this other aspect um, that, that could be available to us well, at some, at it's some part stage. of wayfinding. Sure. And so wayfinding has a different definition for for different people. That's sure. all. Yeah. And um, so I just I just want it to be known to you that this is a sighted people plan that you have. Yeah. Um, and 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 perhaps some of it is good <clears throat> also for low vision people. It depends how low their vision is. Um, but this is not a plan that is truly accessible. So that's, you know, because for example, there could be on each pole that has to do with a, with a pedestrian pathway, not the ones off the big street that have to do with cars, but maybe even that too. There could be at, on the pole, there could be some braille on the pole that says what the, what the sign says. So not everybody who enters the campus enters it in a car. So, I mean, there are things that you're missing. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very torn about how to vote on it because you are spending an incredible amount of money. And when you usually spend that much money, you're expected to do a pretty comprehensive kind of accessibility plan and, and this, isn't. But, but a lot of things that, that we're talking about are, are beyond both the purview of the committee at hand and the purview of the people in, in this room. I mean, from, from our side, right? So it's not that we aren't, you know, considering some of these things, but, you know, this involves a much larger discussion with people at the college at much uh, higher pay grades than me. Um, and, and I think we take all of the recommendations uh, to heart, but I don't think we are I don't think it should be expected that this group addresses all of the issues uh, in all of the manners they need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I think that's unrealistic uh, and not, and also not uh, in the purview of anyone in this room, including me, um, including from our side. So I think we need, we should focus the discussion on, and I agree that we need to explore those and we will take that up at the accessibility working group. But that is also way beyond, again, the. A purview of what's of what we are. This is this part of it. I agree. Wayfinding is a bigger discussion, but this part of it is about signage, and most of it is vehicular signage, not all of it. And so we should we do need to look at some of the the pedestrian level signs. I agree. Correct. But yeah. most of it is vehicular signage. Yes. Keep in mind that we have none now. Absolutely nothing. So this is a huge step forward, and it's an incremental step. It doesn't get us all the way there. Okay. All right, thank you. So do, uh, do we have a second? Saren made the motion, do we have a second? I guess I can second, I'll second it. it. Second it. Tori, I can second it. Okay. All right, and uh, we have um, roll call. Um, let's see here. Uh, so Elise? Uh, yeah. Okay, um, Myra? I think I'm not abstain. Okay. Uh, Tori? Yes. Okay. Uh, Marty? Yes. Um, Ruth? She yes. Here? Yes. Yes. Uh, did, did I get everyone? So one, two, three, Sarah. four, five. And Sarah. and Sarah. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Appreciate nice it. Nice presentation. Love Good. Thank I love you. the purple. <laughs> Great. Thank Thanks so for much. sharing. Okay. Thank you. Take care. It's a pleasure yeah. to meet you. you. Too. Bye. Bye. Nice meeting you. Bye. <laughs> okay. So sometimes raising consciousness is uncomfortable. <laughs> signs are signs. Okay. All right. So we have another issue. Um, the we have a. a uh, an application for variance from 
um, what what number is it? Main Street, East Common, or something? Yes, um, it's for uh, four sixty two Main Street, right? Uh, which is for a, I believe, a mixed use building. Uh, it's oh. by it, it's near the train tracks to give you sort of a landmark. Um, so this applicant has actually already gone through their public hearing process with the MAAB. Um, oh, they another did, one of those. Yeah, <laughs> well, we were supposed to meet last, right, last week. week. Yep. Uh, okay. But I will say, like, well, uh, well, let's see here. So the variance, um, the section under MAAB section 41.2.2, is uh, regarding signage, the mounting height shall be 60 inches above the finished floor to center line. And it's for, um, what signs? Hold on a second. It is for their um, various signs for the maintenance closet, mechanical room, and for their restrooms. And they, uh, and for, I guess various other state, various other interior signs such as um, um, maybe elevator and staircase, and so they were all so they put them up. Um, the the contractor put them up. Sorry, I'm trying to find the page that explains this. So bear with me for some. So there were 38 interior signs that were installed at 54.5 inches above the finish grade above uh, the finished floor to the center line of the sign. Um, the standard says that they needed to be 5.5 um, inches higher. Um, Is it because the doors have a place like a like the design of the door? You can't put one there. Is that why they did it? My hunch is it was an oops that they oh. made a mistake and um, in, in their applications, it says uh, removing the signs and relocating them 5.5 inches higher will result in wall damage and related repair costs. These repairs are an excessive and unreasonable cost without any substantial benefit for persons with disabilities. What is the use of this building? A mixed use building. So, so there's some signs. apartments and um, and I don't know if it's going to be office or retail. I'm not sure. But on the ground floor, there would be some sort of um, non-residential component. And these are wall signs, right? Yeah. And I can pull those up. Yep, exactly. Yep. I assume so, they have Braille on them, right? They do. Okay. Yep. They're pretty required. So that's e even e nicer for people that need Braille, right, Myra? Well, depends how, that they are depends how tall you are <laughs> you know well, like if I you're mean, a really tall person it's probably low no, but but she said it is a oh i see yeah well it's i mean fine to for me, me i'm it, short <laughs> to me it is no problem at all i would immediately yeah. let it go as is okay yeah i mean what did the aab say they were fine with the request and yeah. they didn't make yeah. any conditions. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we, I don't think the board needs to make any action or motions, no. but we can just say the no. board board is fine with requests. Yeah. Um, all right. And let me go back down to the agenda. Maureen, why don't you say the board concurs with the um, decision of MAAB? with the decision made by MAAB. All right, thank you. Um, so give me one second. So um, next on the agenda is the general public comment period. Um, and I don't, no one is in the public no is saying. intending. Okay. So we can just move right along. Okay. Well, Old business, um, the, the item, the first item is the Pomeroy Village intersection project. Yeah. And so if memory serves me, they, the town council will be reviewing that at next Monday's meeting, which right. is Monday, September the 27th. Yep. And so I would suggest if folks are interested in hearing what the 25 percent 
design is for the Pomeroy Village Center intersection project. They should attend the meeting. Um, I can go to the calendar right now and see um, if the um, this item has been added um, to the agenda already. Um, it looks like it hasn't been, but uh, well, actually, hold on one second. Town Council. <coughs> um, no, it has it hasn't been added yet, um, but I can uh, keep my eye on. Uh, the agenda posting to see if um, the town posts the uh, design, so I and um, I can email it to you if you would like a copy yeah. in in advance. I was just thinking about that because we won't have access to any of the materials that the town council will have. We'll just well, get no, to they do. So if you go to um, the town calendar. Uh, uh, listed on the website, all town council meetings, um, they upload all materials to that town uh -huh, meeting okay. posting. Um, okay. And so you could look there. Um, and, um, but I can certainly email this committee, uh, the materials if and when they do become available. Um, and Myra or, or whoever, um, if because uh, my days get very bogged down at times. If um, someone wants to send me a reminder email later this week, um, that okay. would be helpful. But I'll, I will put a little note in my calendar to check again. I mean, what I'm really interested in is, did they have a consultant tell them, a person, an expert on intersections for crossing intersections for blind people, did they have somebody like that help them decide where the curb cut and where the, and what, you know, what kind of curbing should be next to the curb cut and how they're gonna do it. I mean, I was hoping we would have a presentation for So us. what I suspect may happen, and uh, you know, you shouldn't, we shouldn't assume anything, but if, if you'll indulge me with my assumption is that the town council may refer this to the TSO for yeah. review and comment and perhaps the TSO will then refer it to various boards such as the DAAC for comment. Okay. Or we could even, the TSO I think has much more relaxed rules about public participation than the town council does. Um, the TSO and use, often invites conversation about what is there, whereas it's more difficult to participate in a town council meeting. So that would be really good if we could know about when it's gonna go to the TSO. Um, sure, sure. I wish, uh, can we... Can you send a note to Pat DeAngelis that asks her to uh, request that it go to the TSO? Or sure. Um, yep, that's what this committee would like. Well, what uh, do people think? I just think we need more than just a presentation to the town council about what it's going to be like. What does anybody think? It's a good idea. Yeah, I, I agree. Think. I think it's a very good idea. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay. okay. So I and can the send thing you is the, the TSO meets twice a month on Thursdays at, I don't know, five, six, something like that. Um, and so they meet more often than we do. And if, you know, if it comes to us, it would, hold them up by a whole month almost. So I don't know. And I also think Tracy will be a good guardian of what we need. And she's now the chairman of the TSO, right? Uh, to the TAC, Tr Tracy. Oh, she's on the TAC, right. TAC yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. So, so what do you want um, Pat to uh, indicate to the town council? 
Who refers things to the TAC? Is that the it would TSO be the TSO? It would be the yeah, TSO. Okay. All right. So I don't know how those things work as far as who is allowed to refer to what, but it's the TAC that we really want to work with on this, I think. Because that's the Transportation Advisory Committee. Is that what it stands for? Yeah, uh, Transportation Advisory Committee. Access yes. or something. Yeah, advisory. So they're the ones who are going to really care about it in a way that we would care about it. Um, the other people just want to make sure that it's done as safely as somebody says it's safe. But the, they pick things apart at the, T, at the TAC, and that's, I think, what we want to be a part of. I don't know what anybody thinks about that. But they meet on the other Thursdays, I think, than the TSO. So just to clarify, you know, obviously we have the DAAC is one committee, and then the TAC is a, a, a different committee. Um, you as individuals are welcome to attend TAC meetings. Um, but we don't have sort of joint uh, meetings among, you know, your right. board with other boards. But last month, Tracy came and she said she would like us to collaborate um, because we're often talking about the same issues. Sure. Right? So she... if, if Tracy wants to attend meetings, uh, these meetings, you know, okay. um, that's fine. Or if you know, you as individual residents want to attend uh, TAC meetings, that's another way um, to, you know, communicate um, or, or collaborate uh, ideas on various things. Well, do we want them to refer it to us? Do, how do people feel about that? So Myra, your, um, what you're suggesting is to have another set of eyes go over what they come up with the, uh, that is yeah. among the 25% design process. Yeah. So, right. So, uh, and maybe it, it should go to uh, TAC first and also it should come to us at the same time. Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, so maybe that's what we, we, want. we can put it on next next meeting's agenda, or will it be too too late? That's my question. Um, that's why. Um, that's why I wondered if we need to do something. Well, we might have to have a special meeting if that's what they need by timing. Um, yeah. Or we, I don't know. But Pat, if Pat DeAngelis were to bring it to the council that says that we want to be, I mean, what, what we originally requested was that we be involved. Um, and so we are, they didn't have to make us involved, but we would like them to make us involved. So if we can do that, that would be great. So if she could request that it be referred to the TAC and the DAAC, that would be great. Sure. Okay. Cool. Um, All right, and, then, and we have um, one more thing. Oh, it had to do with the grant, right? Which one? Um, you asked us last month if we had other ideas for the, I don't MOD. Even know the acronyms, grant. MOD grant, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I can give you some updates on that. Um, okay. So, so this is for the fiscal year 2022 uh, Mass Office on Disability Grant. So I've been working with our facilities manager, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah LaPlante uh, closely and um, our IT director, Sean Hannon and um, the building commissioner, Rob Mora and planner, senior planner, um, Nate Malloy and uh, Dave Zomack about um, project ideas. So um, we are doing, uh, running some cost estimates for, um, uh, f on two projects. Um, one would be uh, for the front door to the bang center. Uh, it was identified in the transition plan the, that the automatic door opener, uh, the one on the exterior is not working 
and the one in the interior is not working as well. So one is not working. Um, also, there's a, a, a big gap in the door at the top um, that perhaps uh, small rodents could get inside. Uh, and there is um, some minor um, sloping issues at the landing um, outside. And so uh, we're looking at, uh, we're creating a budget to focus on that. And so the real premise would be, uh, focus would be the replacing the door openers. Um, and because they're attached to the doorways, the doors would need to be replaced as part of it. And um, the landing in the front, uh, it's not compliant by 1%. Um, so visually, it doesn't look, you know, that alarming but um but since we're we would be replacing the door and the automatic door opener um we felt that that could be a nice um added um element uh, to make it into compliance and then um seeing how much money would be left over uh the grant is up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars um we are exploring um, uh, purchasing and installing assisted li listening devices to um rooms in the bang center. Um, we have a audible uh, audio consultant um, that the city of Northampton worked with last year. They're out of Lowell uh, and they will be uh, meeting with me and uh, Jeremiah and Sean Hannon tomorrow morning. Um, we're gonna go to the bang center and look at the five rooms of interest and see um, they have uh, different audio, audio systems, assisted, assisted listening systems that they uh, uh, install, one being a, um, a looped system and the other being a um, FM system. And um, they're, um, the, the long and short of it is that these different systems, um, while they do have a cost of uh, difference, um, picking the, the which system that, that could be used is really based on the configuration of the rooms themselves and the types of uses that are um, uh, and activities that occur in those rooms. Um, and so there's a variety of factors um, to um, consider. And so, yeah, so we'll be looking at um, those rooms tomorrow for looking at the room and which system would be would make most sense and um, coming uh, and then asking the consultant to provide a cost estimate. And uh, if, if uh, and then that's when we can really hone on, well, what will be truly in the application. And so that is due October the 8th, I believe. And um, if the assisted listening devices, if all five rooms are incorporated in this application, um, the town is interested in, in um, adding it to the, you know, capital budget for next year. Um, so, um, so this will be helpful. Um, if not for this grant, it'll be for the near future to install them as there's been, uh, you know, so many um, seniors in particular that have spoken about um, the, you know, the sound um, mm -hmm. in those rooms and how the distortion of the, of the sound in those rooms and the echoing is really um, problematic. Um, so that will be of, um, that is of interest for the town to um, rectify. I have a question. Are they still thinking about building a senior center on University Drive or have they abandoned that? I've never heard of that proposal. Did anybody hear about that? That they wanted to build a senior center? I've never heard about that. No, I have you have to get on a bus to to go to that. Wow. Okay, I well, if they're gonna if they're gonna continue to use the banks as the place where the senior center, you know, does all of its activities, this is really important to do. Yeah, and there's a whole other amount of activities that happen there, um, including the senior services. Um, so it, it will have a, a, a big impact for many, um, many, uh, many of our residents in Amherst. And uh, speaking well, of, um, 
Yeah, and uh, maybe Elisa's. Uh, oh, I actually, I don't think the ramp is usable yet, but um, the town um, re, uh, will install a new ramp connecting the Bang Center down to the Clark House. And the construction has been com completed. I believe the fence is still up, so you can't oh. use the ramp because they're paint. They're waiting for the contractor to paint the railings. So if once you want me to painted. send pictures, I can do that because I'm I'm my window faces that whole thing. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, sure. Send them. So We're hoping to yes, see if I can snap a couple of pictures, if I can get close enough and send you pictures and you can forward them. Oh, great. That would be lovely. Um, OK, I see they're still working on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just sort of these final touches. Um, and the town hopes to have a ribbon cutting um, and then I in the near future, like in the next couple of weeks. And I can certainly um, forward that information on to everyone if you would like to attend or read about it. Good. So that's um, yeah. yeah. So does that walkway go around to the front of the building as well or just to the back? No. Just to the yeah. back. No, it connects. Uh, so it connects oh. from the behind the ba the bank center and connects to the existing sidewalk. Um, yeah, yeah, on cool. the front side of the bank center. So, oh, cool. yeah. Hey, oh, okay. Great. Maureen, uh, a thought came to my mind. Maybe the town should look into signage too, like a, a, this a ramp that they're going doing by banks for Musanti Center. Wouldn't there be it? Wouldn't that be nice if there's a nice welcome to Musanti Center and what it provides, or that kind of a thing, and that's some other good. town of functions? Mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jeremiah Laplante, our facilities manager, um, reached out to me about um, the Musanti Health Center and how they would like to improve their signage both for inside the building and outside of the building. Yeah. Um, and because uh, they feel that, you know, maybe sometimes people don't know which entrance is theirs and all that. So that's a really good suggestion. And, and we would, yeah. you know, if, it, you know, when that comes along, if and when, um, you know, probably that might take some time. Um, we, uh, the town would certainly, uh, love to hear your uh, comments and feedback. Does the well, town have the... an official color like Amherst College does? Yeah, uh, I think so. Uh, I should know. Um, I I believe it does. I believe it's like a maroon color. Hmm. Oh, because of UMass. Or no, I think it's school. just the, the color of the town. It doesn't. It's oh. not connected. With the math. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's the high school color. Yeah. Um, I did not know that. Yeah. The but anyway. Maroon and white. Mm -hmm. So for signage, that would work. Uh, yeah, as long as it's maybe, bright and you know, not little. brown. It would have to be a bright maroon, not a brown maroon. Right? Yeah, it would have to be more like um, a cranberry. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so that you would see the sign. If it's like brown, you wouldn't necessarily see the sign, right? It'll fade. Yeah. Yeah. It'll fade yeah. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's cool. It's a good and idea. And also, they gave like us for ideas. example, the accessible entrance for the town hall. You know, it's not at the main entrance. So wouldn't that be nice if there is nice signs uh, that lead you to the accessible entrance too? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yes. No. Very important. So the the yep. um the the doorway to the Musanti Health Center, for instance, that is fully accessible. Yeah. Uh, and so is the front entrance to the bank center that's fully accessible. Um, and so that would be important to look to see if you know, is there a ADA symbol? Um, I, I'm not sure actually at this moment. If there is, there probably is, Look. but yep. I think there's a sign on the wall at the town hall with a little wheelchair symbol, but there it's, is, yep. But it's, um, you don't notice it until you're right there. So, That's a right. better signage would be make it easier, yeah. yeah. 
Aha, uh -huh. so that's that's another project for next year for grants is. Um, it has to be a big better. sign. Yeah. yeah. There is a sign on the um, main street entrance to town hall that has a ADA symbol and it has an arrow and it says, you know, arrow towards main street entrance. It says like ADA door entrance on main street. Um, and then there is an ADA symbol at the actual um, main um, main street sign doorway. Hmm. Okay. All right. Are there any, we don't have any other items, right? Um, are there uh, meeting other updates? minutes? Um, oh yeah, minutes. right, we do. For um, August. I have, a, I have a quick uh, uh, correction to the minutes. Okay. Um, my last name is Dick yeah. is not Dixon, it is Darren. So sorry, it could be changed. That's I okay. noticed that. <laughs> I noticed that too. You did? Oh, we're <laughs> sisters. That's right. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry Any about other that. changes to the minutes? The rest look very nice. No. Motion to yeah, approve the minutes. Sorry. I move we improve the we approve the minutes. <laughs> With a change. Right. With a change. Right. Oh, with a change, yes. Yeah. Yes. I second that. Okay, vote on the minutes. Elise? Yes. Marty? In favor. Tori? Yes. Saren? Yes. And me? Yes. Great. Good to see everyone. I have a one o'clock, another Zoom mm -hmm. meeting. This okay. is great. Yeah. And then oh, you have Marty? one at 3.30. What a fun day. Marty, yeah. did you have something quick? Yeah, I wondered if you had oh. a chance to talk to the building inspector about um, access through the um, oh. outdoor seating areas. Yes, yeah, so I did speak oh, God, to yeah. the <laughs> building inspectors about that and to the assistant town manager. And um, so outdoor dining will end in November <laughs> and um, the building inspector did go out and take a look and said that could be uh, improved out there. And so um, if outdoor dining does return back in the spring, um, they are going to um, look at what improvements could be provided perhaps if um, where Amherst Coffee is, maybe you know where the sidewalk is, they could have seating sidewalk if there's enough width uh, for um, a little seating area sidewalk that would be ada uh, would be the accessible route and then um, perhaps look into having a platform to have more seating if needed um, so that is something that they um, uh, want to rectify um, in the in the, for the spring and perhaps future years so thank you for bringing that to the town's attention what yep. about that thing blocking the sidewalk in that coffee place on Amity Street? Um, so blood, it's completely impeding, you know, yeah. They have this bollard for seating or whatever, like other streets, but then people have to walk on that <coughs> and get back on the sidewalk. Yeah. So I don't it, like that. Yeah. No, again, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Um, yeah. And that, I oh. think because there's just one more month. Um, oh, please. Yeah, I hear you. One more month is that that's not okay. I have to use that every week. I use that every week. And it's, it's really a pain in the ass and it's a turn off. So that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm, it makes me really angry. They had that change and then they had it barricade. I don't like being barricaded when I have to get somewhere so that I have to reroute, you know, I don't, I don't think that's okay, but that's just my opinion. So thank you for letting me vent. <laughs> no, thank you. No, that's, that's your opinion. And, and unfortunately, well, fortunately under the code, there is no temporary situation. There is no leeway for temporary. There's no 10 days, there's no month, there's no nothing. There's, so they they should, in the first place. So there's five more weeks until November. They could fix it. They could fix it, and they should. They fix could. It. 
I need to sign off. Good to see you. Okay. All. See okay. you, Tori. Okay. Bye. Bye, Tori. Bye, Tori. Bye. I should sign off too. Also, um, at some point, Maureen, it would be good for the next meeting if we could get a schedule for uh, investigation and improvement <coughs> to the accessible pedestrian signals. Yes. yes. Funny topic. Keeps coming back. Yeah. Keeps giving. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. <laughs>